um, good afternoon, everyone. So, and uh, today, um, I'm so glad that we have um, Dr. Woody with us. Dr. Woody is a postdoc with us here at Texas, also um, at, at the Gado. So he's working in the global modeling and assimilation office in NASA Gather. And he's done a lot of work, excellent work on uh, climate adaptation. And, and his current research focused on the um, model development, in particularly, in particular, um, works on the coupling between atmosphere and ocean model. Um, and I think I will turn it over. Thanks, John. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm Ehud. I would like to acknowledge also uh, the other, my other collaborators. Uh, so we have Andrea Molod, Athanas Stoyanov, and William Putman. These are our uh, uh, geos atmospheric model experts. Uh, Gail Forger, Jean Michel Champin, Chris Hill, Dimitris Menemenlis, and Patrick Heimbach our uh, MIT expert, and this talk is about uh, the development of the GEOS MIT atmosphere ocean model for uh, coupled data simulation. So this project has an overall motivation, and this is to couple uh, the models underlying MERA2 atmospheric reanalysis. This is the GEOS GCM and ECHO V4 ocean state estimate. Uh, this is the MIT uh, ocean model. And uh, we would like to develop a prototype ocean ice atmosphere coupled data assimilation system, and this is by uh, exploiting and leveraging the data assimilation capabilities of each one of these uh, two models. <coughs> we also work towards close budget uh, global data assimilation system. Uh, this is because current data assimilation system they alias their residuals into external components. Uh, for example, uh, in ECOV4, uh, ECOV4 adjusts its surface fluxes uh, statistically and not directly by physical law. So uh, in the end, what we would like to achieve is a global coupled data simulation system, which also has agreement uh, between the different components. Uh, the applications that we are aiming is uh, to investigate, are to investigate recent sea ice and ice sheet changes, uh, maybe to do sub-seasonal, to decadal climate predictions, uh, and also observe observation system simulation experiments, OCs, uh, these are the kilometer scale uh, simulation that used to uh, simulate observing, uh, observing systems. Uh, and these systems can be used to explore new data assimilation methods and to guide the development of new instruments. Uh, I divide my talk into three parts. Uh, the in the first part, I introduce the current state of uh, our model, which is still under development. Uh, and I will show some uh, first results uh, from a 10-year run that we performed with it. Uh, in the second pa uh, part, I will show some results from about LC interactions in a high-resolution version of uh, this model, uh, about 10 kilometer scale, global cl climate simulation. And in part three, uh, I will talk about uh, consequences of different LC feedbacks on the ocean. Uh, these are ocean-only experiments we perform in order, in order to try to uh, investigate our future uh, coupled data simulation system, and I will explain more about this later. So the first part to where the closed budget planetary assimilation system used the MIT model. So a little bit about uh, the main relevant features. Uh, the GEOS, our atmospheric model, it has finite volume dynamical core. Uh, its physics parameterizations include moist processes based on relaxed Arakawa-Schubert scheme, 
non-local non -local, uh, turbulent mixing scheme, uh, surface layer based on Molyneux-Bokiv similarity theory, long wave and short wave radiation, orographic and non-orographic uh, gravity wave drug. Uh, we also have land surface model there and uh, Gokard, Goddard chemistry aerosol radiation and transport model, <coughs> and some uh, glacial thermodynamics also. Uh, the MIT, our ocean model, is a finite volume, also finite volume, the, uh, has a finite volume uh, dynamical core. It also has nonlinear free surface and real pressure water flux. It means that uh, sea surface height is uh, time is temporally and spatially uh, dependent. Uh, the physics parameterizations include subgrid scale eddy parameterization and several ocean vertical mixing like KPT and GGL90. Uh, and the coupling between GS and MIT is done through uh, what we call ex exchange grid. Uh, this is a grid, this is a new grid that is composed of all cells enclosed by the two grid intersections. So if in red, if we have something in red, the blue, if this, the red uh, grid here looks like our atmospheric grid and the blue is the oceanic grid, uh, the exchange grid will look like that. Uh, and the calculation of uh, fluxes between the ocean and the atmosphere is done separately for each one of these uh, tiles, which is composed from these two uh, grids. Uh, this is to ensure uh, conservative exchange of water, heat, and momentum between the atmosphere and the ocean. The ice uh, in our model is divided between the atmosphere and the ocean. The, ocean, the atmosphere is in charge on the thermodynamic. Uh, this is the, done by the Los Alamos sea ice model, CICE. And the advection is done by the ocean model. It's a viscous plastic model. Uh, so this part is in red because right, the simulation I will show you does not, this part is not, was not yet implemented. Uh, but, but now it's, uh, so now it's been tested, but uh, in the results I will show it's not implemented. So it means that uh, sea ice in the uh, simulation I will show you was growing and melting, but it was not moving. So just for you to take that into account. So we run the model for 10 years. Uh, initial conditions, the atmospheric initial conditions were taken from ERA-2 with the uh, horizontal grid resolution of one degree. This is a cube sphere grid with six uh, faces, uh, 72 vertical levels, the MIT ocean uh, we, we took initial conditions from echo v4. Uh, horizontal grid resolution is also one degree. This is the so-called Latlon cap grid, which is similar to the cube sphere, but it has only five faces instead of six, and one smaller face, uh, four lateral, and one smaller face uh, in the Arctic uh, pole. And uh, we have here 50 levels. Uh, vertical level. So this is the net heat flux uh, from our experiment, 10-year average. This is the coupled, uh, our coupled model, GeosMIT, and uh, this is for reference echo v4, which is the uh, ocean uh, state estimate or kind of a reanalysis, and the difference between two. So overall, we see that uh, we get the general patterns the general net heat flux pattern. So we have strong heating in the uh, tropics and strong cooling in the in the main streams, the Gulf Stream, the Kuroshio, and the Agulas. But we, uh, the up on average, we are a little bit, we have a little bit uh, more uh, net heat flux compared to Echo V4, and uh, we have a drift in, uh, this is what calls for a drift in SST, sea surface temperature, 
and also global mean temperature. So the drift theory is about two degrees in 10 years. And the drift theory is partially because of the uh, climate change in the specific 10 years we run the model, but not only. Part of it is also related to the coupling. And that fresh water flux, uh, also the general pattern looks okay. Uh, we do get, uh, so we do get uh, in, in our coupled model, we don't get enough precipitation in the West Pacific. And we get the so-called uh, double ICCZ uh, pattern, which is common in uh, coupled uh, climate simulations. Uh, <coughs> but overall, uh, we have a realistic general pattern. Uh, the net, it, the net uh, fresh water flux in, the cup, in our couple simulation in, is negative, whereas in observations it's a little bit positive. So we get um, our sea level is decreasing uh, after 10 years by about uh, a few centimeters, and uh, the ocean is getting more salter. So just to conclude this part, our GSMIT model is now more or less operational. We are still uh, now we are we are now testing the uh, sea ice advection, which is more or less the last piece in the model, uh, and the results look quite promising. Uh, and the next step will be to tune the models. We would like to try to reduce as much as possible the drift that we see in the SSP and the fresh. Uh, water flux. So the second part, uh, this is about LC interaction in the high resolution GeoSMIT model. So this is the 10 kilometer global ocean atmosphere uh, experiment that we performed with our system. Uh, the motivation here was first to develop the high resolution capability of the model. We can use it for uh, OCs, and in this case, we investigated the, the LC interaction, LC interactions. Uh, and in particular, here we wanted to investigate the ability of the coupled model to capture the strong observed positive correlations between SSP and wind stress, so SSP. And I will talk about it more. And uh, we also compare with our simulation, our coupled simulation with the atmosphere only simulation, this is also to investigate what is the uh, effect of the feedback uh, when we turn them off in the atmosphere only simulation. So, uh, a little bit background analysis of the uh, coarse scale resolution observationally based, observational based products generally find negative correlation between. SSP and wind speed. And this is what we see here in the two panels on the left for the, uh, from, for the Pacific and on the right for the Atlantic. And we have SSP in shading and wind vectors. And the idea here is that a negative SSP anomaly is generally co-located with strong uh, wind speed and positive SSP anomaly is co-located more or less with the uh, weaker wind speed. And uh, the, the interpretation to this interaction is that the ocean is passively uh, responding to wind-induced latent and sensible heat fluxes. However, on the oceanic mesoscales of 10 to 1,000 kilometers, it was found that uh, uh, wind speed is stronger over warmer SSPs and cooler and weaker over cooler SSPs. And this is what we see here. This is two months averages of spatially high pass filter sea surface temperature overlaid as contoured on spatially high pass filter wind stress. And the meaning of the spatial filter here is that we are looking on the anomaly with respect to larger scale averages. And and the idea here is that uh, positive wind stress anomalies, the red parts here, are more or less co-located with the positive SSP anomalies. And uh, the opposite, uh, negative uh, wind stress anomalies are co-located with negative 
uh, SFC anomaly. <coughs> and the explanation for the positive co correlation here is that uh, warmer SFC uh, increase instability in the planetary boundary layer, and this results turbulent that transfer momentum from the upper levels into the surface, and this increases the wind speed. <coughs> A positive correlation was also found in a modeling study, positive correlation between SSP and wind speed, and this is what we see here. This is the model uh, simulation, uh, the CCSA model. Uh, so uh, this is the correlation between wind speed and SSP. Panel A show a low resolution of the model, uh, which shows mainly negative correlations. Panel B, in panel B, the uh, the oceanic resolution was increased. In panel C, both the oceanic and the atmospheric uh, resolution was increased. And panel D is the observation. So uh, here it was concluded that correlation between SST and surface wind stress is realistically captured only when ocean component is eddy resolving. So uh, we wanted to test if our coupled system can also capture uh, this kind of uh, this positive uh, positive correlation that we that was uh, observed. So we run our coupled uh, system uh, with a horizontal resolution of about 12 kilometers, the atmosphere. Uh, the ocean was uh, has horizontal resolution of about eight kilometers. Uh, with 19 vertical levels. And we performed three different experiments, uh, ocean only, atmosphere only, and coupled. So I will not show results from this experiment, but we used it as the initial and boundary conditions for the other two experiments. So the ocean only experiment ran for six months. It was forced with 0 0.14 degree, about 14 kilometer six hourly ECMWF data. Uh, the atmosphere only experiment ran for two months. It was forced with SST and ice fraction from this experiment. Initial conditions were taken from MERA2. Uh, the, the coupled experiment uh, ran for the same two months with ocean initial conditions from uh, run one and atmospheric initial conditions uh, from MERA2, the same as uh, uh, run two. So the idea here is to investigate the feedbacks uh, between the ocean and the atmosphere and the, to compare between these two. Uh, this one has uh, some of the feedbacks disabled, whereas, whereas here all the feedbacks are active. So this is a movie just to illustrate the ability of the model to capture and, and ocean mesoscale eddies. So we are looking here on the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico and the extension, the uh, Gulf Stream. This is the ocean surface current. And so uh, we have here 24 snapshots per day, and this is a 30-day simulation. And we can see different ocean mesoscale eddies with different scale <coughs> forming in the north part of our domain. And we can also observe in the loop current, uh, one ocean eddy is breaking away from the main loop current and start to propagate uh, westward. Okay, so, and this is how the precipitation look like in our simulation. So we are also able to capture the large scale synoptic uh, precipitation patterns. We have uh, tropical cyclones forming and propagating westward in the Indian Ocean, uh, daily cycle in the Amazon uh, rainforest, and in, uh, in uh, Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, mid-latitude low and their associated rainfall uh, propagating eastward. Okay. 
And we are also able to uh, get the positive correlation between wind stress and SST as, uh, as, as was done in previous studies. So again, we have here uh, wind stress in shading and SST in contours, and in general, positive SST anomalies are co-located with positive uh, SST anomalies. And these two are for the, our coupled system, ocean atmosphere, and these two are for the atmosphere only experiment. So we see that in both MIT and GSMIT, uh, the coupled model, both of them show a positive correlation between wind stress and SST, and this is consistent with previous uh, results. And this is the linear relation between wind stress and SST. So this is the uh, same four domains uh, and experiments that we've seen in the previous slide. This is uh, bin scatter plot uh, of uh, stress magnitude as a function of SST. Uh, and this is how the, uh, this bar chart showed uh, the regression coefficient for these uh, four panels. And also we have, uh, in blue, we have uh, observation, the Shelton study we've seen before, uh, the modeling study by Brian in uh, red. In gray, we have our coupled model and the atmosphere only uh, in, yellow, in yellow. So in general, we see that the linear relation between stress and SST in our coupled model it seems to be a little bit closer uh, to the observed value. Uh, compared to, the, at least compared to the study by uh, Brian. Uh, and this is also true for the atmosphere only experiment. So here we are looking, uh, we are looking on the data from a different point of view. Uh, this is correlation between daily SST, uh, time derivative of the uh, SST, and wind speed time derivative. So here we are not looking on, we are not doing spatial filtering, and we are looking on daily time series and not monthly data. And on the left here we have a zero lag correlation. This is the coupled model and the atmosphere only. And this one is a one day lag correlation. So uh, in our coupled system we see uh, quite general uh, negative correlation on lag zero and positive correlation on lag one. And it means that wind speed is lagging the SST by one day. And this is less clear in the atmosphere only experiment. And we also have a similar general uh, picture in the, this is for the Gulf Stream. Again, negative correlation, more or less negative correlation in uh, lag zero and positive correlation in lag one. So it looks like we have a three, four day cycle. And here we try to suggest the possible mechanism for this uh, cycle. Uh, on the right, we have, I just plotted two example time series, one from the Gulf and uh, one from the Agulas. Uh, we have SST in blue and wind speed in red. And if you look carefully, you can see that in most of the cases, the, uh, SST, the wind speed peaks occur, occur one day later, one day after the wind speed, uh, the SST peaks. So the red peaks are about a little bit after the blue peaks. And our, uh, our uh, possible explanation is that Positive SST anomaly increasing stability and draw horizontal momentum from upper levels, which is like suggested by Shelton. Uh, this increase, uh, this result, uh, positive wind speed anomaly that increase upward latent and sensible heat flux, and this uh, cools the SST and results negative SST anomaly. And then we have uh, increased stability. Uh, which results negative wind speed anomaly, and uh, this reduced upward latent and latent and sensible heat fluxes, and uh, bring us back to the positive SST anomaly. 
So we wanted to see if we can see these three, four day cycles also in observations, uh, at least observational base product like MERA2. So this is the spectral density of the time derivative of SSP and uh, time derivative of wind speed. And this is based on 10 year data from uh, MERA2. And indeed we see a strong peak in uh, wind speed uh, at about three, four days, uh, which is even stronger than the annual uh, cycle and the seasonal cycle. Uh, we also see SSP peak, which is a little bit shifted maybe to four, five, or six days, uh, and, a, and less stronger compared to the wind speed, uh, but it's still apparent. So we also observed something that looked like three, four day cycle in uh, observation. And this is the same analysis uh, for, uh, for the same two months that we have uh, in our uh, coupled and non-coupled simulation. So this is MERA2. Uh, this is GEOS atmosphere only experiment and GEOS MIT, the coupled experiment. So we see here that the spectral density is quite similar for the wind speed in the three cases, but SST is uh, mainly influenced. So we have much less variability in MERA2. This is uh, probably related to the fact that it has much lower, lower resolution compared to these two. And uh, GEOS uh, has higher variability, SST variability, but uh, it doesn't have the feedback between the ocean and the atmosphere, and this is how it looks like when the feedbacks are uh, active. So uh, we do get more or less uh, the MERA2 uh, spectral density, but with some uh, with higher SST amplitude, which is expected because it's higher resolution and uh, because of the feedback between the ocean and the atmosphere. So to conclude uh, this part, uh, first analysis of our 10 kilometer coupled GEOS MIT model with this realistic synoptic and mesoscale patterns. Uh, the coupled model show positive correlation between SSP and wind speed. Uh, this is uh, similar to what was observed before. Uh, the fact that the atmosphere only experiments can reproduce the positive correlation uh, suggest that the atmosphere responds to the ocean and not the opposite uh, in this case. And from our daily time series, our daily time series suggests a three, four day cycle uh, which induced by LC feedback. Okay, so this is the third part. Uh, this is about the consequences of different LC feedbacks on the ocean. So. Uh, we are running ocean-only experiment here, but the idea here is to try to get some insight on our future couple system. And a little bit background about this. So atmospheric and oceanic reanalysis optimize simulated state, the simulated state of the atmosphere and ocean based on minimization of model data differences. And uh, this process is usually done separately for the ocean and the atmosphere. Uh, it means that there are no feedbacks between the ocean and the atmosphere. So in, a, in atmospheric analysis, it is usually the SST that is being prescribed. Uh, in ocean analysis, it is usually the atmospheric fluxes or state variables that are being prescribed. So this results in error in the estimation of LC fluxes and can have implication on the circulation of forced ocean model. And this is what we are looking, uh, this is part of our investigation here to quantify these differences. So the first motivation here was to look on these differences. Here we are looking on MERA2, which is atmospheric reanalysis and echo V4, uh, an ocean state estimate, uh, which is also a kind of a reanalysis. In terms of uh, L heat flux. Uh, more important for us was to investigate the possible effects of MERA2 atmosphere on echo V4 ocean using different forcing methods. So this is, a, 
here we try to explore our future data simulation system. And, and this is because uh, data simul uh, in the couple data simulation system, uh, the feedbacks between the ocean and the atmosphere, they are active because we are running couple, but to some extent they are uh, disabled because of the data assimilation process, uh, because we force the model to look like uh, observation. So for us, uh, turning on and off uh, different feedbacks, uh, it serves as, uh, as, as, it, it serves as uh, a couple data simulation system, uh, uh, different flavors of the same couple data simulation system, uh, but in an ocean-only uh, setup. Uh, so here we also documented the agreement of the MIT DCM sensitivity simulations. Uh, now we show one slide re related to this. So uh, some more background on this. So there are three main methods to thermally force uh, ocean models. Uh, the first method is by relaxing ocean surface to prescribe the SSC. The second is by providing LC fluxes from observation. And the third is by providing atmospheric state, surface state variables from observations and calculating LC fluxes interactively. Uh, in the first method, the relaxing with prescribed the SSC, the heat flux is proportional to the difference between the surface temperature and the first model level. It has the disadvantage that it does not require any atmospheric, uh, it has advantage that it does not require uh, any atmospheric information, we just need to uh, observe the SSC. Uh, but on the other hand, it does not constrain LC fluxes to be realistic. It's just the difference, it's proportional to the difference between uh, sea surface temperature and the uh, surface temperature. And this method is considered as probably the oldest and simplest way to force ocean models. Uh, second forcing method, uh, uh, this is forcing with fluxes. Here we provide realistic LC fluxes from observation. Uh, there are no, uh, in this case, there are no feedbacks between the ocean and the atmosphere. So uh, long wave radiation, sensible heat, and latent heat are, uh, are not active in this case. It means that we provide, uh, we, we provide these fluxes and they are not changing by the changing SST of the ocean model. So what it means is that if we provide the ocean model with negative heat flux to the ocean, the ocean will get cooled and indefinitely. Um, there is a link here between the thermal and the hydrological forcing. It is provided by the atmospheric observations. This is with the latent heat, which is proportional to evaporation. Uh, in terms of our coupled system, for us it is considered as an analog to coupled data simulation system which is strongly constrained by the atmosphere. So uh, we can we consider it, it as an extreme case in which we have a lot of observations, surface observations, and uh, we strongly constrain the coupled data simulation system to look like uh, surface observations, and in the end we get fluxes to the ocean that are more or less similar to the fluxes of uh, uh, the atmospheric reanalysis. Uh, second, uh, a third method uh, to force uh, ocean models forcing with state variables. Here, LC fluxes are calculated from surface state variables and the change in SST. So we have uh, feedback between the ocean and the atmosphere. Uh, so if we provide a net positive heat flux to the ocean, the ocean SSC will start to get warmer, and this will reduce, uh, disable, these fluxes will reduce fluxes to the ocean and will uh, bring us to a quasi-equilibrium state. Uh, the reasoning between thermal and hydrological forcing in this case, uh, this is the, uh, provided uh, through the latent heat by the ocean model uh, in this case. And uh, this method also considered as a useful compromise and is 
probably the most commonly used uh, today, the two-fourth ocean model. For us, it is considered, in terms of the couple data simulation, as analog to uh, couple DA system, which is less constrained by the atmosphere. So here we are more constrained in the ocean. This is uh, another extreme case in which the ocean is more constrained and we allow fluxes to change. So now, uh, so now we have uh, more active feedback. So uh, we ran a couple of uh, sensitivity experiments. Uh, we ran MIT GCM ocean model in its ECHO V4 configuration. This is a 20-year run. Uh, we used MERA2 as surface heat fluxes and state variables so as the porting data. Uh, and this is depends on the sensitivity experiment. Uh, Runoff was uh, prescribed from a different data set. And the CIC in this case is fully active, but uh, we had to use the same uh, bulk formulae uh, in all of our sensitivity experiments. So we are focusing here more on regions without CI. So this is uh, how the first sensitivity test looked like. Uh, this is uh, MIT GCM forced with MERA2 fluxes. Uh, this is what we call MERA2 flux experiment. Um, so on the left, we have the net heat flux to the ocean, 10-year average, 20-year uh, average. And on the right, it's the SST. Uh, the two upper panels are MERA2 flux. Uh, the two middle panel are the difference between MERA2 flux and MERA2. And this is the difference between MERA2 flux and ECHO V4. So here, by definition, the netted flux, uh, MERA2 and MERA2 flux, netted flux is, by definition, the same. And this is a negative compared with the ECHO V4 netted flux, which is quite balanced uh, data set in, uh, in terms of the netted flux to the ocean. Uh, and when we look on the SST, we see that the SST pattern, global SST pattern, is completely distorted in this case. And uh, the mean SST, global mean SST, is colder by about 2.5 degrees compared, uh, compared to observation. Uh, the second sensitivity experiment we performed is what we call MERA2 state. Uh, this is MIT GCM post with MERA2 state variables. So now we have the three active uh, feedbacks, long wave, sensible heat, and latent heat. And here we see that compared the, to MERA2, the net heat flux is now increased, and it's much more balanced. Uh, it looks very similar to ECHO V4 right now. And the general SST pattern look to be, seems to be restored in this case and uh, also the mean temperature is more or less close to uh, other observational, uh, observational based products. However, in this case, uh, error, uh, errors propagated to the water cycle and resulted in a global mean sea level increase of 2.7 meters. This is uh, not shown here. Uh, and this is clearly not a physical mechanism because the atmosphere holds only about 2.5 centimeter of uh, sea level uh, equivalent water. And so the reason why sea level was increased so much is because of the is latent, uh, latent heat feedback. So uh, this is the latent heat, this two. This is the difference between uh, MERA2 state and MERA2. And this is sensible heat and uh, long wave radiation. So sensible heat and long wave almost did not change in this case. Uh, it was the latent heat was, that was increased by, uh, on average, by 12 watts per square meter. Uh, so the net downward latent heat uh, was increased. It means that the upward latent heat was decreased. And this uh, means that evaporation was decreased. And this is why our sea level uh, was increased in this case. So, and the reason why latent heat was the component that uh, increased so much is because this is the most uh, uh, 
sensitive component to changes in SST. And this is what we see here. So on the right, we have the governing equation, the bulk formulae and the long wave radiation. And on the left, this is the heat flux uh, with respect to uh, with the heat flux uh, as a, the heat flux derivative with respect to SST. And this is also as a function of SST. So what we see here is that for uh, ocean temperatures of about above seven degrees Celsius, latent heat uh, becomes the most important component. This is the blue line. Uh, the red line here is the uh, uh, sensible heat, and the yellow is the uh, long wave radiation. So latent heat is the most important component. And when you change the SST because your data set is not balanced, uh, the latent heat how to respond, and this changes also the evaporation. In fact, uh, if we expand the net heat flux uh, from era two, uh, from era two state experiments with respect to uh, SST, uh, and we can define a relaxation time scale R, and interpret the bulk formulae and the long wave radiation as a source term in the temperature evolution equation. And this source term uh, relaxes the ocean temperature into the MERA2 sea surface temperature. So what we are seeing basically is that forcing the ocean with state variables can be interpreted as strong relaxation to observe the SST and this is mainly because of the latent heat. So this motivated us to try another new and intermediate uh, forcing method to the ocean. Uh, this is what we call forcing with turbulent fluxes. Uh, so latent heat in this case and sensible heat fluxes were prescribed from observations, uh, but we have the long wave feedback active so if the ocean is getting warmer, the, we uh, have more emitted long wave. And in the end, we get to uh, uh, some kind of uh, quasi equilibrium state. Uh, here, there is a link between the thermal and hydrological forcing. Uh, it is provided by the atmosphere, like in there are two flux. Uh, and for us, in terms of the couple data simulation, it may reflect a compromise state between the ocean and the atmosphere in a coupled data simulation system. So this is considered by us as probably more realistic uh, forcing method if we are thinking uh, on coupled data simulation. So this is how uh, this sensitivity experiment look like. Uh, this is MIT GCM forced with MERA2 turbulent fluxes. We call it MERA2 tube. And uh, we see here that the net heat flux compared with the MERA2 is now increased, but it's still a bit uh, lower compared with the echo V4. So SST is not completely restored, and we are still getting uh, a bit uh, too cold uh, ocean in terms of global average, about uh, minus 1.5 to 2. Uh, degrees uh, cooler ocean. <clears throat> However, in this case, we have no change in the water cycle compared to MERA2 uh, state. Uh, and this is the three components. So uh, latent heat and sensible heat are, by definition, the same in this experiment as, as MERA2. But now it is the long wave radiation that compensates for the negative heat flux that comes from uh, MERA2. And this is a time series uh, of the th three different sensitivity experiments. So we have in red MERA2 flux, and MERA2 uh, tube in green, and MERA2 state in blue. This is SST, sea surface temperature, and sea surface salinity on the right. So for sea surface temperature, MERA2 uh, tube and MERA2 flux are drifting. MERA2 state, state looks like it is quite balanced in terms of the SST, but 
Uh, the opposite is true for the sister of salinity here, Mera 2 state is now drifting, and uh, Mera 2 flux and tube are now in quasi balanced state. So basically, we moved the arrow in Mera 2 state, we moved the arrow from the SST into the sister of salinity. Uh, we also looked on uh, model data differences. This is uh, based on the cost, cost function, the echo v4 cost function. So it includes uh, many in situ observations and also satellite observations. And uh, so here we, we found that MERA2 state had the lowest uh, cost function compared with the MERA2 tube and MERA2 flux. Uh, but for sys of salinity, uh, MERA2 tube had, the, uh, had the, the lowest cost function, but it was not far from MERA2 state. PR core is another uh, similar experiment to MERA2 state, but here we just changed the, the precipitation to uh, GPCT precipitation. So it didn't change much. So to conclude this part, uh, we performed three experiments using three different forcing methods. In MERA2 flux, we saw a constant decline in uh, sea surface temperature. In MERA2 state, it's able to restore the SST, but it resulted in a large increase in sea level and SS, SSS drift. MERA2 tube uh, had larger temperature errors uh, than MERA2 state, but it has better physical justifications in terms of the water budget. Uh, so we think that for some ocean modeling applications, the traditional surface forcing with atmospheric state variables and bulk formulae may not be optimal. And this MERA2 tube may also, may, may also be an option. Uh, and our results also argue for next generation data simulation climate study to involve, to involve fully coupled systems. So just last uh, slide, uh, this is our next step, so we will finalize this advection, tune the model, and to walk towards one kilometer global coupled atmosphere ocean ice model. And uh, as I mentioned, these are uh, what we are aiming in the end. That's it. Questions. Interesting talk, but uh, I actually have two questions. One is on your part three, and one is on your part two. Let's go through the part three first. I wasn't quite sure what your what your strategy is. You look at the sensitivities of all the surface structures, and then you show the long wave seems to be very important, right? And then you, I, I, I know you also show the latent heating is important. So what is the strategy? Are you going to include all the flux terms in your simulation model, or, or are you just use, use one of them? I wasn't quite sure. Except the idea you know, what heat can burn from this sensitivity. So from us, what we learned is that this mirror to tube experiment in which the latent and the sensible heat fluxes are prescribed, they are not active, may be more uh, relevant for, uh, to for, it's a new method to, not really new because we just turned off one of the feedbacks. But it's a kind of a new method that may be used in different studies. And for us, we found that it has an advantage if we want to look on our future coupled data simulation system. Yeah, so, 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 so I assume if the one that has the most sensitivity, then you definitely want to include, pay, pay attention to it, right? Because right now, are you- The, are the latent is- All the terms? All the all the flux terms, or just the latent heating term, is good enough. Or is, is, is so in this experiment, it's it's just the long wave. The latent heat and the sensible heat are turned off. Yeah, this is because the latent heat was. System, when you actually do the simulation, yeah, all those terms are there. All the terms, so yeah. Question, my question is, from your experiment, can you say that okay, I I don't need to worry about sensible heat flux. I'm just giving an example. Yeah. Or I should pay a lot of attention to long wave flux. That would help you to 
you don't need all the data set in the world. You need to get the service structures. Maybe you can program yeah. an emission data set, or you can. That's my question. But this, I mean, yeah, this is what we aim to. So, what, 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 so for example, in C in CFSR, which is the couple data simulation system, they also see uh, they relax the ocean the sea surface temperature very strongly to observe the SSD. Right, that seems to be the easiest thing to do, but so, you're saying that's not good, right? No, I'm saying it's a different way to investigate future couple data simulation. So in CFSR, for example, they f uh, relax the ocean strongly, so uh, maybe a ex similar experiment with relaxation to sea surface <laughs> temperature may reflect CFSR couple data simulation system. In our system, uh, I believe that we will not relax the sea surface temperature to uh, to observe values, and this is what Mera two state experiment is doing. When you when you use the latent heat, you relax the sea surface temperature very strongly to observe uh, conditions. And in our couple system, we aim not 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 to do this relaxation. So Mera two. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We will be coupled in the end. The fluxes will be available yeah, but in I the end. But they, they are be they will be some to some extent muted by Oh I focus on this one. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so when 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 we will run our first couple data simulation experiment we will look on this experiment and we will try to match them. And the one that looks similar, we will be able to say if it's the latent heat or the long wave or maybe the sensible, the sensible heat. So for us, it's a preliminary study. And when we will have the coupled system, this will help us to learn more about our future coupled system. Yeah. You mean this one or? We you mean this one or? just flat over the entire ocean basin. I'm just surprised. Wow, the structure in the ocean. This one, you mean? No, no, you actually show a left correlation in which the whole thing just. Ah, okay. Yeah, completely changed time. Yeah. yeah, something like this. Yeah. That's what I was very particular. So you this is the structure. So the, the ocean circulation, the, the eddies, and everything doesn't matter. You just simply yeah, this is this is what something that was really surprised to us also. But almost argue against why you need all this structure in the ocean, but your end result is simply a complete. No, but the, but this is just. It is just showing the, the feedbacks. It shows that there is one, no, there is not one, but there is a physical mechanism here that it's, it's, it is active in, in, in many places. It's the same physical mechanism. You do see this, a lot of patterns between. So this is this was also surprising to us, but in the end, in the end, it's the same feedback because when ocean, when ocean, when ocean is getting warmer, there is a feedback that makes. It does matter. It's correlation. This is the data, but uh, yeah, and, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I study ocean energy a lot, but I don't do a simulation. <laughs> but this is just a coupled uh, model one. It's a free coupled model. <laughs> So 
ಅಥವಾ ಒಂದು